What's up, everybody? Good afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are. There you go. Um, it is another episode of Bible Tales, and we're going through the Bible chronologically, and we are currently uh, still in Judges. Actually should hit Ruth in a few days. And you're right, Andrew, Ruth is one day, chapter one through four. It's going to take a little while because there's a lot to talk about in Ruth. It's a great book. Um, but today we're doing Judges 10, 11, and 12. We're going to learn some more about Jephthah and his crazy vow and then his conflict with Ephraim. And then we'll wrap it up. And then the next one will be the birth of Samson. All right, dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you that we get to look at it today, Lord, and thank you that um, we get to spend time doing this. Please write your word in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Are you reading 10? You're reading 10, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, um, also, we have a special guest with us here today. So um, if, if you want, you can type into the comments who you think this guest might be. Uh, and I'll give you a hint. It is a family member. And so that's the only hint you get. And maybe on the next video, we'll do a reveal. Maybe. Bro, this mic keeps falling. Well, because you need to zip up your zipper so that it doesn't keep falling. There you go. Okay. There. I just look right. weird. Okay, All go right. for it. Chapter, chapter 10, Tola and Jer. After Abimelech there arose to save Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, and son of Dodo, bird, <laughs> Dodo, a man of Issachar, and, and he lived at Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. And he judged Israel 23 years. Then he died and was buried at Shamir. After him arose Jair the Gileadite, who judged Israel 22 years. And he had th 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. And, he, and they had thirsty cities, 30 cities, called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. I think Jair. Oh. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. Further disobedience and oppression. Okay, so let me say something real quick. Read, read the first part of six until you get to and served. Six. And Jr. And Jr. No, the first part of six until you get to and serve. The first part of six until you get to and serve. What? Oh, the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Okay. So this is what starts, actually, we've heard this before, but this is the seesaw, the peaks and valleys of is Israel's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Their abundance and peace versus their valleys and struggles and challenges. So this is where they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, right? And then when they get punished for it and they have tough times and the people start to persecute them around them, the people around them start to persecute them. They go back to the Lord and then they have good times again and they go back and forth. And so what happens is they stop giving God the glory and the credit for all of their well-being. They start to take that well-being uh, they start to give themselves credit for it, and that's what, that's what causes them eventually to move away from the Lord and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, right? So the, the lesson here is give God praise always and then constant gratitude for him. Okay, thank you. All right. And serve the Baals and, and the Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, and the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook God the Lord, and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and, and into the hand of the Ammonites. And they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that, that year. For 18 years they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, that, which is Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to, also f to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin, against and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was very distressed, severely distressed, severely, severely distressed. <laughs> and the people of Israel, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, uh, saying, "We have sinned against you because we have forsaken our God and have served the Baals." And the Lord said to the people of Israel, "Did I not save you from from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the Ammonites and from the Philistines?" The Sidonians also, 
and the Amalekites and the Mo Ma Malnites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I have saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will save you no more. Okay, let me say something about that real quick. Therefore, I will save you no more, right? So he's basically saying, I'm leaving you. And he's kind of pushing them in the other direction, right? And so I read a, an example of how some doctors get people to quit smoking. And I don't know if this method is still practiced today. To, today, uh, Not as many people smoke as years ago. But what they would do is they would lock you in a room. And they would, so you would go to them and you'd say, hey, I want to quit smoking. And they would lock you in a room and give you, you know, however many packs of cigarettes. And this room would be like, there's no ventilation, right? And so they would tell you, just keep smoking, keep smoking, chain smoking. Don't stop until you're so sick of the cigarette smoke that you never, ever, ever want to do it again, right? So this is an example of God like saying, okay, you're on your own. And then eventually what happens is they fail so badly that they come on their knees back to him. I keep going. Go and cry out to the gods. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in the, in the time of your distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do, do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please del deliver us this day. So they put, so they put away, the the, wait what? Oh, so they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms, and they encamped at Gilead. And the people of Israel came together, and encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said, said one to an, one to another, Who is this man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Good job, Andrew. By the way, I don't remember. I don't, okay, bring a bottle over here, please. I don't remember the Mal Malonites. Do you? Mayonites? I don't remember them either. Um, all right, just one spot on this. Actually, no, sorry, a couple. On ten three through five, which is interesting, where it's talking about Tola and Jair. It's most likely the judgeship of Jair was the time period of Ruth. Andrew, bring the bottle over here, please. Thank you. All right, and then 10, 13, and 14. Here is the form of God's wrath in, by which he abandons persistent, willful sinners to the consequences of their sins. This aspect of divine judgment is referred to in the case of Samson as well as the warnings of Proverbs 120 through 31 and Romans 124 through 28. It is a pattern of rejection seen throughout history, even among the Jews. All right, and then 1015, do to us whatever seems good. Genuine repentance acknowledges God's right to chasten, so his punishment is seen as just, and he is therefore thereby glorified. It also seeks the remediation that chastening brings because genuine contrition pursues holiness. All right, chapter 11. Jephthah delivers Israel. Now, Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty warrior. He was the son of a prostitute. But he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, you shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. You think it's Tob or Tob? Yeah, I also don't think it's Jephthah. Jephthah? Jephthah. 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 Yeah, you're right, Jephthah. Was I saying Jephthah? Yeah, Jephthah. Jephthah. Good catch. And worthless fellows collected around Jephthah, Jephthah, and went out with him. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader, that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, that is why we have turned to you now, that you may 
go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said, What do you have against me that you have come to me to fight against my land? And the king of the Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel, on coming up from Egypt, took away my land from the Arnon to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore restore it peaceably. Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of, the Moab, of Moab or the land of the Ammonites, but when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel then sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let us pass through your land, but the king of Edom would not listen. And they also sent, and they sent also to the, to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Verse 18, Then they journeyed through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab and arrived on the east side of the land of Moab and camped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to Sion, king of the Ammonites, or Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land to our country. But Sion did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sion gathered all his people together and camped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sion and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. So Israel took possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country, and they took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So then the Lord, the God of Israel, dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and you, and are you to take possession of them? Will you not possess what Chemosh, your God, gives you to possess? And all that the Lord our God has dispossessed before us, we will possess. Now are you any better than Balak, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever contend against Israel, or did he ever go to war with them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages and in Aror and its villages and in all the cities that are on the banks of the Arnon 300 years, why did you not deliver them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, and you do me wrong by making war on me. The Lord, the judge, decide this day between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the Ammonites did not listen to the words of Jephthah, Jephthah that he sent to them. Okay, verse 29, Jephthah's tragic vow. Then the, the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh and passed on to Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jeph- Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand. And he struck them from Aror to the neighborhood of Minnith, 20 cities, and as far neighbor, as far, where did I go? And as far as Abel Karamim with a great blow. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, who comes out? His daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. And as soon as he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, for you have become the cause of great trouble for me. For I have opened my mouth to the Lord, like an idiot, and I cannot take back my vow. And she said to him, remember he vowed that whatever came out to greet him when he came back, he would give as a burnt offering to the Lord. My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has avenged you on your enemies, on the Ammonites. 
So she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Leave me alone two months. That I may go up and down on the mountains and weep for my virginity, I and my companions. So he said, Go. Then he sent her away for two months, and she departed. She and her companions and wept for her virginity on the mountains. Meaning she has no children, right? And Verse 39, And at the end of two months, she returned to her father who did her did with her according to to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man, and it became custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went year by year to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a row. Four days in the year. Four days in the year. Excuse me. Thank you, Andrew. All right, 1131. I will offer it. Some interpreters reason that Jephthah offered his daughter as a living sacrifice in perpetual virginity. You know what that means? That means basically that he said, okay, I vowed, not that you're going to have, not that I'm going to burn you, but that you're never going to have kids. With this idea, verse 31 is made to mean, shall be the Lord's, or I will offer it up for a burnt offering. The view sees only perpetual virginity in verses 37 through 40 and rejects his offering as a human sacrifice as being against God's revealed will. On the other hand, since she was beyond the Jordan, far from the tabernacle, a hypocrite in religious devotion, familiar with human sacrifice among other nations, influenced by such superstition and wanting victory badly, he likely meant a burnt offering. A burnt offering. The translation in Judges 11.31 is and not or. It's the translation is and, not or. Right. So it's and I will offer it up for a burnt offering, not or I will offer it up. His act came in an era of bizarre things, even inconsistency by leaders with whom God otherwise empowered. Um, why did I write that? 11, uh, pretty soon. So a, a, a hypocrite is someone who says, uh, don't, drink children. don't eat candy. Candy's terrible for you. <laughs> don't ever eat candy. It's so bad for you. Oh my goodness. Don't ever eat candy. Oh no. Don't ever eat candy. It's so bad for you. Mm. Okay, that's a hypocrite. <laughs> Basically you're doing what? No. Okay, I forgot to write EV Bible here. Okay, so Andrew, you will in a second. Okay. Wait, did I say, where did I say you were going to read that out? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, 11.3 went out. Such attacks would be against the Ammonites and other pagan peoples and brought fame to Jephthah. Okay, Andrew, I want you to read 7.21 through 23 in the Amplified version of the Bible. This is Matthew. Matthew seven twenty one through 23, Amplified Version. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You who act wickedly, disregarding my command. Thank you. All right. 11.39, and then Alex, you can read. Jeff Bath. Okay, so I forgot to say, we're always reading from the ESV translation, and a lot of the... Um, one second, please. One second, please. And a lot of the uh, commentary we do is from John MacArthur, but... Also, we're reading from the Evidence Bible, which has commentary by Ray Comfort. So that's what I'm reading from now. So 1139, Jephthah, Jephthah sacrifices his daughter. Some believe that because the Bible related the incident, it was somehow condoning it, and that the action pleased God. However, God clearly condemns this detestable pagan practice known as an abomination. 
The scriptures are given to us for our instruction. We can learn life lessons from all the stupid things that men and women did in the Bible. Noah became drunk and shamed himself. Saul became jealous and destroyed his life. Judas was a hypocrite and ended up killing himself. Peter slept when he should have been in prayer and denied his Lord. David let lust into his heart and committed adultery and murder. These, in, these, incidents, these incidents were written for our admonition, and we can either humbly learn from them or plow, proudly walk down the same tragic path. The choice is ours. Admonition is an authoritative warning. Lust is, I heard you, lust is when you look at um, a woman or a man, a woman looks at a man and is attracted to them sexually, but also it takes it a step further in their mind and basically thinks about what it would be like to have sex with that person. That's what lust is. So when the perfect example is when David saw Bathsheba doing what? Do you remember? Bathing on her rooftop. Why was she bathing on a rooftop? I don't know. But she was bathing on her rooftop. He saw her, thought she was attractive, and then acted on it, right? Had her summoned, brought to him, found out she was married to, um, I forget the guy's name. What was his name? The general in his army. And then plotted to kill that guy, and then eventually succeeded, and then ended up having a child who later died at a very young age. And then, um, like a year old maybe? I forget. The baby got a fever and died. But anyway. But Bathsheba was in, her child was in the, the um, what's it called? The lineage of Christ. So even through that craziness, he used her. Yeah, absolutely. The tribe of Judah. All right, Alex, you are up. Andrew, can I have the mic, please? It's right here. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay, now Alex is going to read chapter 12. The men of Ephraim were called to arms, and they crossed the Zaphon and said to Jethem, Why did you cross over to fight against the Ammonites and did not call to us to go with you? We will burn at your house over with fire. And Jethem said to them, I and my people had a great dispute with the Ammonites. And when I called you, you did not save me from their hand. And when I saw that you had would not save me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over the Ammonites, and the Lord gave the, them into my land, hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? That Jephim gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead struck Ephraim because they said, You are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites in the midst of Ephraim and Manasseh. And the Gileadites captured the fords. Fords? Yeah, like the openings of the river. Of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. And when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, let me go over. The men of Gilead said to him, Are you an Ephraimite? When he said no, they said to him, Then say Shibboleth. Shibboleth. And he said Shibboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they seized him and slaughtered him. So if you can't say a word right, they kill you? Well, that was their way of telling whether he was from, um, what's it called? Whether he was a Gileadite, right? No. You mean Ephraimite? Ephraimite. And so what he, they would say Shibboleth, and they would say Sibboleth, right? So they, they took out the H. They couldn't pronounce it right. In fact, there's stories in World War II where that same thing happened with Germans, they would say, who were pretending to be like Russians, for example, the Russians would say, say this word, I forget what it was, and then if the Germans, they would say it differently, they would know that they were German, pretending to be Russian. Because they would speak 
perfect Russian except for specific words. Okay. Of where? Then they seized him? Then they seized him and slaughtered slaughtered him at the forge at the, of the Jordan. At that time, 42,000 of the Ephraimites fell. Death hath judged Israel six years. Then Death hath the Gileadite died and was buried in the city in Gilead. Is Ibzon, Elon, Elon. and no, Abaddon. Abdon. After him, Ibzin of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He gave in marriage outside his clan, and 30 daughters he brought in from outside for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzin died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon, Elon, wait, how do you say it? Elon. 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 The Zebul, Zebulonite judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. Then El, 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 uh, how do you say it? Elon. Elon, the Zebul, Zebulonite died and was buried at Adjalon in the land of Zebulun. After him, Abaddon, the son of Hill, Hillel. Hill, Oh, how do you say it? Parathenite. Parathenite judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys. What? Huh. Who, some needed three donkeys. No, they each had their own donkey. There's 40 oh. plus 30, right? That's seven. Oh. Simple math. Oh. Oh. Mm. oh, where is it? 15. Uh, then Abaddon, the son of Hila, the Pyrethnite, died and was buried at Pyrethin in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. Good job, Alex. By the way, just a simple note here that Bethlehem they're talking about is not in Judah. That's not the Bethlehem where Christ was born. This is oh. actually in Zebulun, so it's a different Bethlehem. It's correct. Andrew. Per Parathenite. Yeah, no, you're right. All right. Okay, that wraps this up. Thank you, Lord, for this word that we got to look at today. Thank you for all the lessons. And yes, hopefully we can learn from them and not make the same mistakes. And um, not that we'll have an easier life. That's not, not the point. But the point is that we just won't fall out of fellowship with you, Lord. And that's uh, hopefully never our goal. And Lord, we ask that for everybody listening in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for checking this out. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Thumbs up, subscribe, and share.